Our guest today is Mr. Brian Kirshner, a businessman and the owner of Lido Theatre in Fort St. John. Welcome, Brian, to our program. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Thank you. So, talking about the theatre, the first theatre in Fort St. John started in 1936. It was started by a local dentist named Dr. Wesel. And what was the admission fee? Well, it's interesting. Uh, the, the admission fee, the fee was uh, 25 cents from what I understand. I, uh, I don't know that as a fact, but that is uh, one of the, uh, the uh, unknown secrets about the Lido that uh, this doctor, that's what he charged, which was very easy for people to come up with. So yes, it was uh, 25 cents from what I understand. Yeah. Interesting. And is it true that eggs, fruits, vegetables, they were also accepted for admission? Well, I think during those times, and it, you know, it sort of hit around the dirty 30s, and I think it didn't matter what you needed to get in Fort St. John, be it a movie ticket or maybe some dental work done or, or any of those kinds of things. People were, uh, they were willing to trade because that's all they had. Money was a little tougher to come by. So, yes, I understood that they, uh, they were tra uh, trading produce <laughs> for, uh, for admission, yeah. Does it work today also? I'll take a loaf of bread. <laughs> you know, we uh, donate it to the uh, Salvation Army or something for sure. I mean, it's... it's it's not something we customarily do, but we do an, an awful lot of fundraisers at the Lido just uh, for those types of causes that will take in food and give out food. So Excellent. Yeah. And when did the first talking movies come to the Peace region? You know, you got me on that one. There's, this, there's a gentleman in Fort St. John by the name of Councillor Larry Evans. And I know he'll know the answer to this, but I, uh, I don't really know the answer to that. Uh, we moved here in 1966. So it was 30 years after that. Uh, I'm really not sure when the first movie theater or, or talking movies came. And the theater started around 1957? Well, the, the Lido Theater, where it sits now, in the building, the structure that's there, uh, it was built uh, in 1956, uh, and in 1957 it opened. Now, interestingly enough, the theater actually began, uh, was opened by a, a, a fellow from Dawson Creek, Mr. Carlson. And the actual true name of the Lido Theatre is Carlsonia Theatre, after Mr. Carlson from Dawson Creek. And as the rumor has it, if, uh, if you folks have ever been to the Fort St. John dump, as you go through the gates on your left-hand side, you'll see a Quonset. That Quonset used to sit on Main Street, right on the other side of the Condell Hotel. And that was the original movie theatre, and it was a mobile movie theatre. They would, uh, I don't know if it was just between Dawson Creek and Fort St. John, Larry Evans will know that answer, mm -hmm. but it is, um, they would come, they would set up in that Quonset, and they would show the movies in there. Thank you. Now in 19, uh, sorry, in, yeah. in 1957, um, it was uh, uh, Bose, uh, Mr. Bose, Mr. Heron, Mr. Pomeroy, and uh, Mr. Uh, CC or Clem Brooks. Uh, the four of them got together and they, they used to take a lot of trips to Las Vegas and they'd go and see the bright lights and the big fancy chairs and the big theaters. and they had this vision to build a new theater. So in 1956, they uh, obtained the location where it is currently sitting now, and they began construction, and the theater opened in, uh, in 1957 in the same location that you see it in now. Thank you. And yeah. when did you take over the theater and redesign it? Uh, I actually took it. It's, it was actually April Fool's Day. April 1st, 2007 is when, uh, is when we took possession of the theater and uh, began the dream, as we'll call it. It was, um, it, I had gone to our, our local cultural center and I had gone to see a, a band by the name of Glass Tiger and also Honeymoon Suite. It was a double bill. And as I sat in the theater and I, you know, listening to the music and it would take me back to where I was doing things perhaps I shouldn't have been doing in the 80s, but it was so much fun. But I found myself restricted that you couldn't really feel the music, you couldn't get up and dance with the music, you couldn't maybe have a beer while you're listening to the music, you know, those kinds of things. So I thought, I've never really been much of a bar type person, um, but I thought it would be really great if we could get something that was somewhere between a, a bar and a soft seat theater, where people could go up and they could move and they could dance and they could feel the music. And that's where the Lido idea came about. So Thank in 2003 you. was the first time I actually uh, I went in to view the theater in 2003 because it had sat empty when uh, Landmark Cinema 
had built a new fourplex where it sits down now in the uh, in the Totem Mall. And in, in 2003 it was empty and I had gone to that concert and I was all excited and I went mm -hmm. and got the real estate agent to show me through the building and uh, um, it took uh, it took four years to get it though. And when did you discover your passion for business and arts? You know, I, I don't know if I have a passion. I certainly have a passion for business and I've developed a passion for the arts. Um, I just, uh, for me, it's, I, I have a, uh, a passion for, for challenges, a passion for uh, things that aren't, that I feel maybe could be or should be. Um, I, I, I like uh, bringing different things to the table, whether it be, you know, even back with some of the house parties when my parents used to leave town, and they probably will watch this and they'll know. But, they would leave town and we used to have um, some great gatherings at the house. And, you know, we'd shoot pool and we'd dance and we had live bands in the backyard and the neighbors would sit out on their fences and, and it was just bringing people together was more of what I have a passion for than it is actually the performing arts or, you know, anything in particular. Yeah. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about the challenges, what bureaucratic challenges you have faced while managing the theater? That's a, that's a really in-depth question. It's like anything else. When, when things are easy, everybody will do them. But when you, when you start to challenge uh, ideas and concepts, things that perhaps haven't been done before, uh, my vision was that every, every small town has a, 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 an old theater. I mean, it used to be uh, that you know, the movie theater was the place to go to, or the hockey rink. Or if you're old enough, you'd curl but it was usually the hockey rink mm -hmm. and the movie theater were the forms of entertainment. And so when I decided to take over the old movie theater, it had been closed for four years. Uh, I took it over, it was a lot of dust, the seats were all still there, the movie equipment was still there. Um, I've got some of the old pictures that I look at now and the first thing to do was, you know, obviously you obtain the, the actual building itself and the rights to it and, and um, Going to, the, to City Hall, um, I started construction of the Lido, but I didn't have a building permit. And, and so the City of Fort St. John, um, and you know, they're doing what they're supposed to do, I'm not arguing against that, but, but I did a bit of homework and I didn't have to have a building permit because I wasn't changing structural. So I ran into a few difficulties, you know, um, making some cosmetic uh, changes in the theater. Uh, we, got, we got through that. You know, and I, I understand more about uh, fire safety now than I ever knew before. Uh, the health, we have a, fully, a full health license at Toledo uh, to pop our popcorn. You know, we, we have all those <laughs> things in place. Um, we had gone through, uh, and, and part of the vision was to be able to, um, to, be able to show live sports. Uh, I am a sports fan, and the the screen is still in the theater i've upgraded the actual projection system but the screen is still the same it's 16 feet wide or high by 24 feet wide that is one big tv and so the clarity um in that in that building was such that i'm standing up in the green room where the entertainers would be and i'm with the liquor licensing uh, department and we're watching a vancouver canucks hockey game it was the year they went to the uh, to the finals against boston Everybody was very excited about this and I thought I'd been getting special occasion licenses on quite a regular occasion because people wanted to book the Lido for their events. And it had been uh, suggested that instead of doing that, perhaps I should go and I should actually get a liquor primary license, which is what I did. Uh, and that was in, uh, in 2008. I applied in the spring, I received the license in the fall. And kind of in uh, beginning of 2009 is when I really started to function as, uh, as a liquor primary facility. Uh, and, and we found that it is not as easy as what people think it is. There are things that are unknown. Um, there are actually three licenses in the province of British Columbia, and, and one of which is the license that I have now, which is Concert Hall Stadium Auditorium, very similar to the Encana Event Center. Really interesting thing is that the definitions of live and the definitions of, of what is uh, what is entertainment, what isn't, those guidelines uh, were were not clear, and so we went through some uh, some hiccups. I had a, a license suspension. I got fined. 
But to give up on that at that point wasn't, it's not in my blood. It's part of the reason why I have the passion that I have. Um, things weren't right in my mind, so I wanted to see them change. I wanted it to be easier. And right around that same time when I started uh, trying to establish and change some liquor licensing ro uh, rules in the province of BC, the Reuth Theatre in East Vancouver uh, got wind of, of the things that I had been going through. And so she's contacting me on a regular basis to help them try to change some of their um, uh, trials and tribulations that they were having with liquor licensing down in Vancouver as well. And you know, if, you, if your constancy to purpose is, is that you have a real true passion, and you know you're within the guidelines, you're not harming, you're not hurting, it's, it's helping, um, good things will happen from that. And Minister Yap um, had gone through the province uh, two years ago, and he did a, what they call a stakeholders review. And they went to all of the, uh, the pubs, the restaurants, the uh, beer and wine stores, the off sales, went to everybody and had a uh, stakeholder review with all of these individuals. And it was very interesting that what came out of that, uh, they actually had, I believe it's on page 62, they actually have a picture of the Lido in this, uh, in this document and they, they speak about the Lido and about how it operates and how they would like to see the province of British Columbia liquor primary licensees operate in that same manner in the model that we do. And so allowing us to take our lumps and still try to move forward with um, bureaucratic changes in that, it's now the province of British Columbia effective January it's, it's really loosened up the rules to uh, liquor licensing. So I think it's really helped a lot. I paid a little money, I served a little time as far as you know suspension and that, but, but I think they saw their way to what we are doing and what we do is, uh, is a benefit to a community, not a, not a detriment. Thank you. And how are you trying to convert the theater into a cultural hub for the community? You know, I, I don't know that I'm that's, uh, that's a really good question because I don't think I am converting it. I think what I did is I kind of changed the canvas. I made some changes internally. I, I opened the doors and the community is the one that's, um, that's making the changes, that's, that's creating this hub. You know, they're, they're calling for comedians and music and, and meetings and seminars and you know, we can do weddings and funerals, and we, we, we're very diverse in what we can do, and it, it's really, it's been here for 57 years, since 1957, which is 57 years, I think, and, uh, and it'll, it'll live a lot longer now because the community wants it to. They're supporting what we do there, um, and I, I just think it's great because they're the ones, Fort St. John is the one that's, that's making it into what it is now. Great. We're Thank just you. there. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And other than <coughs> this, uh, Lido Theatre, when it comes to community service, so what activities are being supported by the theatre for the community? That is, uh, um, I kind of pride myself when I, the, the whole team we have there, it's, it's interesting how um, we wanted to put a thermometer on the outside of the building, uh, and we may still do that. It would take a little bit of accounting, but when I start adding up the dollars, which is always seems to be a measurement of how it's supporting the community. When the dollars that have been raised through the Lido, you know, given back, like we're the venue, but it might be Big Brothers and Big Sisters. It might be, um, you know, Women's Resource Society. It might be the Rotary Club. It might be any of these organizations that are uh, utilizing the facility to one, get their message out, and two, is to raise funds so they can, you know, operational expenses and things like that. And the fact that we are there um, we do about a hundred events a year, so uh, when I look back, you know, starting our 11th year, we, we do a lot of things. My wife and I actually met because I wanted to do a wine festival, I wanted to help out on it. And uh, it was funny, but Councillor Byron Stewart uh, had introduced us because he had sat on their board of directors with the Association uh, for Community Living. And the funny thing is, he said, well, I'm on this board and they want to do a wine festival, but they're not really sure what to do. And I thought, well, I'd love to do a wine festival. And so I ended up get, becoming involved in, in doing this event. Uh, I married her, by the way, so we're, we're together now. Okay. Happy ever after <laughs> kind of thing. But it is, it's something that the community is, has, has endorsed us or has, uh, has put their arms around us. And, and it's really fulfilling. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a really, 
it sounds weird, but it's a nice place to have a funeral. It's a nice place to have a wedding. It's a nice place for retirement. It, it just seems to work um, for many different things. So I'm happy that the community uh, utilizes it as much as they do. Quote from Kevin Spacey, a well-known actor. He says that the greatest sound in the theater is silence. Please comment on this. For him, if, if he likes the silence of it, uh, there, there would be a lesson in there, I'm sure. Um, Brian Kirshner, the not actor guy, would say that uh, when I, I, I don't want the theater to be silent. Uh, I think the greatest sound in the theater, probably above all, is, is applause. Uh, next to that is laughter. Next to that is tears. Next to that is uh, singing. You know, I, I think I think a theater is alive with, with the sounds and not with the silence. Great. And another quote which comes from the classic theater and books and all that, uh, do you agree to that quote? It's the classic old Brutus U2. Is it a reality of life? Interesting. I, I think that... Um, what what Brutus and Julius Caesar and th that happened, you know, as far as the, you know, he felt betrayed. He felt um, uh, that, you know, of all the people, of all the people I could possibly trust, this would happen. Um, when I look at that, I, I, it brings me to my son, uh, Adam. And when I originally bought the theater and the intention was to build this theater up and that, there was an exit strategy because I love building and then I love moving on. And the strategy was that my son, Adam, who's a, an accomplished singer, actor, he's, he's, he loves that type of thing, that he would one day take it over. And he betrayed me. Because now he lives in Vancouver, British Club, <laughs> and he's doing exceptionally well down there. But it is interesting how um, what we think and what we know and what is are never what they seem. But this was a pleasant betrayal, not that bad as that of a oh, character. Oh, his betrayal? No, I have no, I have no wounds <laughs> on me. Maybe a little one right here, but uh, yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a betrayal like that. It, you know, I, I felt a bit betrayed by, you know, maybe liquor licensing or the city of Fort St. John when they, they said that, uh, oh, it's awesome that you're going to reopen the theater and downtown revite and all that, and then it's like, oh no, you can't, you can't build, and and so some of those things where you go along, if if you allow that to to uh, impede your progression. If you allow that to be, well, well, I can't do that. They're right, I can't do that. Well, then they're saying that to you now becomes your reality and you say you, to yourself that you can't do that. You're probably right. But if you question some of those things and if you, you keep an open eye and an open ear and, and, uh, and you, you don't expect negative, but it's not an impossible thing to happen. So I think it's just, you just got to go through and and, uh, and and trust in in your feeling and trust in your gut and and most people are pretty damn genuine. Great. And what's the scope of arts and entertainment currently in our community? We are alive with the sound of music. I gotta say, I should write that one down. It's a mm -hmm. very good quote. Julie Andrews might get to me on that. Fort St. John is is a, a very unique community in that the. The arts and culture here, we have some very, very um, skilled individuals. And those skilled individuals, uh, we're fortunate to have them here, but they're here for a reason. They're here for a reason, and a lot of times I think it's due to a T4. You know, they need to make a living. Their true passion might be theater, or it might be music, or those kinds of, of, of different um, uh, scopes of the arts. But darn it, it's hard to make a living as a, as a recording artist. So you, you go, and I, I use that one the most because there's so much uh, live music being played in Fort St. John now. Thank you to Egan's Pub, obviously, because they're the ones kind of who, who started that whole open mic format. But people who come to Fort St. John, uh, they don't come for the weather, and they don't, you know, they don't come because it's clean or don't... You know, I mean, it takes a lot. We, we don't live in the prettiest community in, in, in the province by any means. But it's, it's a damn fine community, and I think that once they get here, they realize that the place is alive, and it's, it's, um, it's a wonderful place to, to, to live. We uh, moved here in 1966. It's 
supposed to be for two years. That's what mom and dad said. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, we'll be here forever now. It just, you know, it, it gets into your blood and, uh, and welcome to the community. You, you've you. been here six years now and you're fitting in very well. Thank you. Uh, and I just think that um, Fort St. John has is, is, is got a lot to offer. And, and I think people come here because they can make a good standard of living or, or a good living and, and the extracurricular can come. Thank you. And finally, what are the best annual events at the theater? There's many bests. I would, I would say that the, one of the best events we have is the Association for Community Living, the uh, of the Vine. Um, it's a, it's top-notch entertainment. The food is out of this world. They really do everything up, uh, top scale. And so, you know, that's probably one of the best fundraising events we do. Um, the the Kentucky Headhunters. When we had an opportunity going back, gosh, I'm going to say it was 2012, 2013. That's probably my favorite concert we've ever had. And when they say Southern Gentlemen, those guys are Southern Gentlemen. You know, they came to the theater and, and they're, you know, in some ways I think they're too big. They're too big to play the Lido. They're still really big. They can still fill auditoriums <laughs> and stadiums. And he came there and he's got his Coors Light. And he says, how come we're not playing here tonight? <laughs> you know, in that, in that whole southern drawl thing. And, and they, were just, they were just so uh, uh, eager to play. They were so eager to, to, uh, to, you know, the adoring 250 fans that we brought out, you know, where they were at a, a festival the day earlier than that, and they were playing for 4,000 people. You know, and they just had so much fun. And they, they accolades to the staff at the Lido, they treated them well, and they treated us well. And... And you know you've done a good job when it isn't like have a good day and they shake your hand and off they go. No, it's you're hugging it out and you know high fives and <laughs> and you have some fun and, and you know we've done Paulie Shore in there. You know he is he's a wingnut. He's <laughs> very much a wingnut. But being able to sit there and go one on one with um, uh, Jimmy Rankin up in the office. You know we're just having a glass of red wine at the end of a show and and just talking about his family and stuff and. You get to learn so much about so many people, um, and it's really interesting to see how they they relax. The the theater d doesn't look it's not brass and glass. It doesn't look posh. It looks vintage, and and for some reason people walk in there and it says you know it feels like home to them. And so when we when we do our events, um, I like them all. You know I, I really do. I just the the pride that we get when people come in there. And they, you know, they high five us. You know, thanks for bringing this in. Oh, this is my favorite band, or my daughter looks so beautiful on her wedding. That's the stuff. That's the stuff that that um, I'm gonna say it keeps me coming back. Great. And finally, Brian, what's your message for the artists of our community? Message for the artists of the community. Gosh, usually that should come from someone who is an artist themselves. <laughs> um, just keep on keeping on. You know, if you have a love, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm at that 55-year-old stage and, and there ain't no freedom there. You know, it's, it's enjoy life as you go along. It's experiences, it's, um, it, it, you know, keep, keep the chapters. I, uh, I keep laughing at all my staff about a book that I'm going to write one day. It's called Teach a Woman to Fish. And it's a, it's a wonderful novel. Um, one of my staff, Kate, gave me this beautiful bound book two years ago and I open it up and the first thing it says teach a woman to fish and I flip over to the second this is a novel in the making and I flip over to the second page and it's blank and every <laughs> page is blank and I think that if if a person was to look at look at their life and, and start thumbing through the pages um, the purpose behind teach a woman to fish was was that there are things that we do as individuals and there are things we do as couples and as family members and as friends and as uh, sports members. You know, it's, it's about being well-rounded. It's about, you know, not doing any one thing too much. Just do a whole bunch of everything. You know, the world is not that big. Go see some of it. Great. Thank you. And thank you for coming to our program. And we wish you all the best. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you.